Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to All Things Irish and Rock and Roll. My name is Benny White, and as usual, myself and Brendan Finglas like to bring you the cream of Irish uh, entertainers uh, to maybe tell us their stories and how they got started and who their influences were. We have a bass player extraordinaire this week, and his name is Garrett Brown. It's not Gareth. It's Garrett, Garrett as in Attic. And uh, Garrett is going to talk about his very interesting life playing in bands here and, of course, playing in bands in the Middle East. So, Garrett, you're very welcome. How are you? Thank you. Now, tell me, we always ask our uh, guests where they got started and what sort of influences they have. They ah, had. Well, OK, well, it goes right back to my uh, childhood. I guess... Uh, one of the, the, the first things I can remember really as a young child was that there was always music in, in our house, mm. uh, especially at Christmas when the, the parents would invite uh, the relatives over and you'd always hear them singing songs mm. and, and we had a piano in the house and my mother would be tinkling away on the piano and my sister and myself would be upstairs and we'd just have our ears cocked listening to, down to what was going on. It was always, in those days, that generation, the entertainment was that they would uh, you know, sing a song. So I was, there was Being music Irish. going. Yeah. yeah. And my mother loved music and mm. she played piano. So in the afternoons, just to wind down, she would always go into the piano and just tinkle away and play a few tunes. Mm -hmm. And my father also played the piano by ear mm -hmm. and he always played on the black notes. Don't ask me why, but it was always <laughs> the black notes. So between the two of them, there was music in yeah. the air yeah you know? and my father loved all the real old john mccormick yeah. and all that sort of stuff and he'd be singing those songs so so that's really what happened at the and beginning. you'd also listen to those um uh, um programs between one and two o'clock uh, on rta didn't you the the, the sponsored programs yeah, yeah. well you, one thing in our house my father always had the radio on yeah he was always listening to the news and straight after the news at lunchtime, mm -hmm. we'd be sitting in the kitchen and of course the sponsored programmes came on mm -hmm. and you'd have, you'd, you'd have the, what was it, the Waltons programme, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was great, and the mm -hmm. Birds Custard programme, mm -hmm. and the one with Frankie, the, the, the Agony Ant. Anyway, there was always music and they were playing all the great old songs from that time, you know, yeah. you know and some great Irish stuff like Joe Dolan, mm -hmm. all his old songs. Mm -hmm. and uh, But so I was just... You know, always hearing music. And then my mate next door was really into pop music and and graphing the charts. So he'd be listening to Pick of the Pops and he okay. would tape record Pick of the Pops and then give me the tape, you know. So I'd oh, be listening to very Pick good. of the Pops. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. if you remember, I, th I forget which day of week it was, but there was the Irish top 10 or the top 20 on one evening of the week and I'd have a transistor radio and I'd always go down into the garden in yeah. the summer and just sit there listening to the... Was that Larry party. Gogan? I think it was Larry I think Larry it was Gogan. Larry. He yeah. used to, because he worked there for a hundred years. Yeah. Larry, I knew him very well. Um, but uh, I think that's that's what it was. So, yeah. so then, okay, you're mad into the radio, you're mad into music and then, so what influenced you to take up um, a uh, guitar? I'll tell you what it was. Uh, I was sick in the year 1967, myself and my sister both got very sick. I, I think it was glandular fever. Okay. And we were stuck in the same bedroom with a radio between us mm -hmm. for about two weeks. And I turned, the radio was on, and I discovered Radio Caroline. You know? Oh, yes, yes. And I was listening to this, and I kept hearing the Beach Boys, Sloop John B, and Good Vibrations and mm -hmm. all this playing. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. And at this stage, I was, it was, that time when my sister had a guitar, mm -hmm. right? And uh, she wasn't really interested in it. Mm -hmm. And she, I asked her, could you please teach me how, a few chords so mm -hmm. I can try and play the guitar? Because I, I wanted to play it after hearing all these songs. Mm -hmm. And she taught me three chords, which was D, G, uh, A, and sorry, I think it was four, A7. And with that, that gave me the tools to play a song. Excellent. And I sat down, and would you believe my first song I learned was Sloop John B. Sloop John B, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was the start. And of course, we had we had all the all those programmes on BBC, you know, we had the Jukebox Jury. Yeah. Uh, we had Pick Up the Pops and all of those. And it was, even for me, it was lovely to listen in and listen to the brand new records and hear what the judges would uh, would say. And sometimes, 
the artist would be behind the screen. Yeah. So if they gave it a bad review, the artist would uh, appear out yeah. and they'd all be mortified. Oh, I'm sorry, your record is actually yeah. very good. So, yeah, I done the very same, Gareth. Um, Can I just say that, that there on. was one other thing that had a, a very strong influence on me. I was used to watch a thing. Do you remember that Cracker Jack was on television? Yes. Five, and there was another one called the Five O'Clock Club on ITV. Okay. And there was a guy that played the guitar and taught you chords on it. His name mm. was Bert Whedon. Did, oh, do you yes, I him? remember him. Yeah. And he'd do sort of a little bit of a, a guitar tuition on this. Yeah. Club, and I'd be yeah. watching that. And that also inspired me to uh, learn the guitar. So I learned these first few songs like Soup yeah. John B. And then I learned Blowing in the Wind. Yeah. And I learned, um, there was another one that I learned as well. Oh, yeah, If I Had a Hammer. Oh, yeah. If I Had a Hammer. That was one of my favourites in the key of C, by any chance. <laughs> it probably most likely was. Yeah. But, and so they were the first songs. Yeah. And my mate, I had a friend, a school friend, who was also interested in playing guitar, but he was a little bit, sort of, he wasn't quite sure. So anyway, the two of us formed a duo. Okay. We were both in the Boy Scouts. Yeah. And we started playing songs together. Had and you got a name? Uh, I, we did have a name, but I can't remember what it was. Yeah. I think yeah. it was, well, yeah, you can imagine. Yeah. We, we dressed, we played in the Boy Scout show up oh, on stage. Okay. And we wore, do you remember those Railbrook shirts? That are the Bry Nylon shirts? And yes, the I plastic do, shirts. I do, um, well, we had two uh, yellow shirts and we wore dicky bows. Yeah. And we played Blown in the Wind and yeah. Invite a Hammer yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. this. Uh, and also, Where Do You Go to My Lovely? Oh, yeah. yeah. And we did that in the Boy Scout show. That was our first Great game. fun. I mean, great, great fun. Now, you are you started to listen to um, Radio Caroline and, of course, Beast Boys. Cliff Richard and the Shadows, you said that. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, you loved yeah. Um, yeah, because, listening to their songs and maybe learning. You know, lis listening to the shadows, the guitar. Yes. Yeah, that was also, if you remember at that time, the shadows were like the guitar band. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and yeah. I was really interested in guitar at that time. Mm -hmm. I, I did, bass didn't, I didn't even consider bass. I yeah, just, yeah. just loved yeah. the guitar. Yeah. And I was always paying attention to solos mm -hmm. on whatever record I heard. Mm -hmm. But one record really st stuck out for me, and that was... The Hollies, Carrie Ann, oh, and the guitar soul on that. And I yeah. remember every time that song came on the radio, mm. I'd be calling my mother, come, come here, mommy, it's coming up now, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. he would start the guitar soul, and then they fade the bloody thing out. Oh. And I'd be fed up. I'd be shouting at the radio, why didn't you play the solo, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, as was the, the, as was the story all that time, yeah. you know? Yeah. Now, your aspirations. Yeah. You said there, the cream, the who, deep purple. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I was getting a bit older at this stage. Yeah. The Boy Scout thing was like when I was around 13. I was yeah. doing all that blowing in the wind and yeah. all that. Yeah. But as I got into, I think I was 16 or 17, uh, no, I became a leader in the Boy Scouts. So we used to go to these meetings, mm. leaders' meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but one of the guys was really into music. And mm. we'd sit around and he'd always, after the meeting, put some records on. Mm -hmm. and one was the cream, oh, yeah. right? Uh, uh, I forget which album it was, but he okay. said, listen to this, you know, d d d Eric Clapton, he's that best guitarist yeah. in the world. Yeah, and Ginger yeah, Baker, he's yeah. the best drummer. drummer the and world, I was yeah. I was believing him. Oh, wow, I'm listening to the best drummer in the world and the mm -hmm. best bass player, Jack Bruce. <laughs> and, and I thought, wow, this is amazing stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, he introduced me to the blues, yeah. you know. Mm. And I, I thought, God, this is really, really interesting. Mm. So that sort of gave me more of a push to get out of this duo exactly. playing this sort of what we called at the time was a ballads or folk or it would have been folk wouldn't folk, it folky yeah folky stuff yes yeah. so all that folk so and music i wanted to play you know electric guitar yeah you know? so yeah. i ended up anyway with a bunch of mates i got i got into it. my first garage band with some local lads mm -hmm. and i was the rhythm guitarist in okay it right now i wasn't very good mm. i knew a few chords but the guitarist was, was the proper yeah. virtuoso in the band, and he'd play all the lead solos and all yeah. that. And I would play the, the, the rhythm guitar, and, mm. and the, it, when the hard bits came, I'd sort of fiddle around and just make yeah. a bit of noise, and yeah. then when the easy bit came, I'd start playing again, you know? So listen, you're probably like myself, Garrett, you'd always go and hear bands, and you'd be scrutinising every note they played, every chord they played, the drummer, the bass player, the guitar player. You were like that yourself. Well, th that was actually... 
that was the main reason for me to go to see bands uh, mm. gigs like I wasn't, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't interested in the girls. I was interested in the band. Mm. That's why I went to the gig. Of course. You know, so I was one of those guys that was always hanging around the stage, staring up at the band, mm. usually with a mate who was similar interest. Mm -hmm. And we'd be saying, now, oh, did you hear that bit, you know? And I'd be watching and I'd say, now, how did he do that? And I was mm. watching and learning mm -hmm. at every gig I went to. And I went mm. to see you with mm -hmm. Albert Ford. And it was the same thing. I used to love looking at Jody there because he played That's the right. SG, you know? Absolutely, yeah. And, uh, uh, I, and at the Platter Man, I mean, yeah. Rob Strong, yeah, it's yeah. just fantastic. There were places like uh, the Stella, would it be, uh, on Belfield? Yeah, oh yeah, and... well, first of all, it was Stella House, because I lived in Goatstown, and Stella yeah. House is my local of dance course. hall. And I went there for a long time, mm. it seemed like two years at the time, mm -hmm. maybe. But, and I used, there was a gig downstairs in Stella called, the, it was The Cave, and Crossroads. Yeah, Crossroads with Jimmy Slevin. Jimmy Slevin okay. and Fran. Fran Breen on drums, Brandy, okay. and a guy called Paddy Fortune on bass, okay. who I actually bought my first Fender jazz bass from oh, actually okay. years later. Okay. But anyway, I mean, I didn't know Jimmy at this stage, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, they were a fantastic They band. were actually, You yeah, know, the three yeah, of them there, yeah. and Fran on the yeah. drums, and Fran always had the fag hanging out of the mouth as he's yeah, playing the drums. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so Stella House and I, all the other bands, like they, they had these visiting bands from the UK, like the Equals came. Yeah. I yeah. saw Dave D, Dozy, Peaky, Mick and Titch with, would you believe, Elton John on keyboards. Oh my God. You know, and um, the, there were lots of other great Irish bands of the time, you know, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the Sugar Shack and mm -hmm. the, the, I can't remember their names. I know, uh, yeah, I, I, I like that myself, honestly, when someone asked me what was my favourite, well, the Creatures were always a great yeah, band yeah. to me, I loved the Creatures and still yeah. do. Um, uh, the Uptown Band, of course, with yeah. Dave Lennox and keyboards, I remember, I don't know whether you saw those. There, well, no, you see, I was a, I was a little bit younger, mm -hmm. uh, like the, all the guys that went to town to the countdown were probably five, four or five years yeah, older. They, they were yeah. older than yeah. me. Uh, yeah. By the time I reached that age, yeah. Stella House was was the it was all suburban for me. Yeah, okay. you know, it was only okay. later I, I started going into town, so yeah. I wasn't part of that town I scene. Like yeah. so, I was Stella House and Belfield. Then. Yeah. So every Saturday night, I'd go to Belfield to see yeah. the bands, and of course, yeah. then I ended up playing there years later myself. And exactly, bands, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. so Stella House and Belfield, but it was a great time because. Ireland was full of just great bands. There it was. So many it of was. Them. It was in a very exciting time. Yeah. And if you didn't play in a band, you wanted to be in a band, or you go and see bands. But yeah. It was purely, mostly beat groups, wouldn't it be? Uh, yeah. You know, which I think we call them there at yeah. that time. Beat groups. Uh, I yeah, but beat groups. Uh, it was always it was a group. Uh, yeah. The name band was. Uh, yeah. It might be the something group. Later, you started calling it the something band. Band, yeah, exactly. You know, but at that yeah. time, it was groups. Yeah. I think that was to uh, to differentiate between show bands and yeah. groups. Maybe. Yes, yeah, maybe. maybe it may have been, you know, unconsciously, we were all doing, oh, it's a great group, it's not yeah. a band, because then you're a show yeah. band, you know? Yeah. But uh, your first gigs, um, the, the, or at the barn? Yeah, yeah, the barn, that was... Uh, who, who was this with, Gareth? This was with my first garage band. Okay. Right, okay. called Aura. Now, nobody would have seen this band because we only ever did two or three gigs okay. you know we did a gig in the barn our very first gig uh to to uh, uh, just a dance okay you know and uh, we had i can't remember the equipment was just rubbish of you course know, yeah. little amp yeah I, my, my amp as far as i can remember was a, a an 18 inch a vortexian amp with a with a, an 18 inch speaker yeah. on a on a cabinet that we built but we were so eager to get playing, we didn't even bother putting a baffle or a backboard on. It was just a speaker mounted on a frame. You know? I know, you can so imagine. You can imagine what yeah, it was like. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. later on, we did another gig in Gormanstown, Gormanstown uh, okay. College. Yeah. And we, it was to some school do, and we were playing with the Trench Band, and mm. uh, two bands. Mm. The Trench Band was Mark Costigan, okay. and who later joined Step Aside and all That's those. Right, but, Mark, uh, yeah. Uh, at that time, and I remember uh, that gig, we went to the pub across the road from the gig before the gig, and Bren, our guitarist, drank too much, and you know, mm. <laughs> he could hardly play when we played the gig, you yeah. know. And then we did the Fox Rock Folk Club. Do you remember? Did, did you ever hear of the Fox, Fox Rock, Rock Folk, Folk Club? Club? It was like a jazz folk No, it club. didn't. No, okay. that's. 
Well, you'd all the like Louis Stewart, oh, and okay, all yeah. these uh, sort of yeah. jazz acts, and they'd have folk acts, and yeah. um, uh, anyway, we, we played that. Gig. Okay, but okay. that was the garage band. But moving on from that, then I started to play my first proper band. Okay. Uh, which You're was, still on guitar now, or are you on bass? Oh no, no! I had moved on to bass at this okay, stage. The okay. reason was I was originally rhythm guitar player, but we had a a bass player who got the nickname Plinky Plunk, and he had that name Plinky Careful Plunk. Careful now, she might be watching. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember his name, but Plinky Hi, Plunk. Plinky. He had such a style of playing bass. Bass it sounded like Plink Plunk, Plink oh, Plunk. Okay, okay. And okay. one day he didn't turn up for practice, and mm. the guitarist said to me, "Oh, he's not here. What are we going to do?" And he looked at me and says, can you try and play the bass? I said, well, I'll give it a try. And I just yeah, picked yeah. up the bass. I never even picked it up before. Right. And I just, I knew instinctively that, well, if I'm playing A on the guitar, well, A must be that it's, no Yeah, exactly. Bass, you know? yeah, and yeah. I just started playing the thing. Wow. And within 10 minutes, the guitarist turned around to me and said, Carrot, why don't you just be the bass player? Yeah. And I said, okay, yeah, why not? Well, what, how are we going to do this? Oh, we'll rehearse one day a week when Plinky Plunk is not here and we get him to leave the amp and guitar here so you can use it. So that's how I got into Scully playing bass. <laughs> um, well, that's, that's brilliant. Now you're, you're all the bands and there's a hell of a lot here. You yeah. have Lucy Crown, the Trench Band, Niama. Yeah. Oh, Naima, sorry. Naima? I, I only mention Naima because they were a band at that time. Okay. Like because in my first garage band, uh -huh. Uh, our guitarist ended up playing with Naima, okay. and Mark Costigan, and um, what's his name? Um, Fran Breen was with okay. him. Okay. And uh, what's his name? Great name, Naima. Yeah, Naima. I only mention that because uh, it just reminds me of the time. Yeah. But uh, my first uh, real band, I think, uh, like Lucy Crown, Fran Breen was the drummer in that band. Mm. Uh, but that band never got to the stage to do gigs. Oh, I okay. can't remember why. Okay. We, we seem to spend all summer rehearsing in yeah. Fran Breen's I've front. been in a few of those bands. Yeah. Just rehearse and then yeah. all of a uh, sudden you're gone. Yeah. yeah. But my first proper band was Zebedee. Zebedee, yeah. yeah. I remember Zebedee yeah. very well. Good musicians. At that stage, I had done enough groundwork with mm. Lucy Crown and with mm. my garage band, and I felt confident enough yeah. to go and join a, you know, what I said. A repetitive band, yeah. 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 And it, I don't know how I found out that they were looking for a bass player, but anyway, mm. I did. And then mm. I used to travel all the way from Goldstown out to Maynooth to rehearse. That's a bit of a drive. And I went on my motorbike, and I had my bass strung over my neck, you know, just sticking up there as I'm driving the motorbike oh out, out to my uh, rehearsals there. Wow. But anyway, that was a great band to play with. Really nice I lads. I would say so, yeah, really. But T. Jim Tutty was the bass player before I joined. Okay. And he left to join, was it Stagali or one oh, of these bands at that time? Good, good pedigree there, actually, yeah. you know. So they were there and we did a few gigs and we were doing all the Wishbone Ash stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah, Throw yeah. Down the Sword and yeah, uh, yeah. a few of these. It was a guitar uh, you know, twin guitar band. Yes, and, uh, so listen, went on to the Dave Prim, uh, yeah. Dave Prim band. Yeah, uh, they were very good as well. Yeah, I, I yeah. Mean, oh I, yeah, I, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I I could give you the story. Like uh, when I went, when I joined Zebedee, mm -hmm. I, I'm just trying to know the Dave Prim band. Oh yeah, I remember now. I went to London before I joined the Dave Prim band to mm -hmm. work for the summer. You know mm -hmm. the way we used to do that sort of thing. That was after. I can't remember how I left Zebedee, or I don't, I can't remember what happened. Okay. But I, I had a few months free and I wanted to get a proper guitar, a good guitar. Yeah. So I went to London and worked at London Airport loading airplanes mm -hmm. with baggage. Mm -hmm. And I saved up enough money to buy my first Fender Jazz bass, which mm -hmm. I bought from Paddy Fortune. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I had a good guitar and now yeah. I had a good amp. And Smiley Bulger came out to Mark Costigan's house to hear me. I was. I used to jam with Mark and just mm. play. We, we were mates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were in school class together, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and Smiley, for some reason, came out and we were there. And then he mentioned to me that Dave Prim Band are looking for a bass player. And he had some involvement with the Dave Prim Band. Okay. And he got me the gig with the Dave Prim Band. Yeah. And I went down to Clonmel and spent months rehearsing with them down there and living there. Okay. And we did various gigs here and there. It says here. Yeah. Eric Bell Band. Now we're going up again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long were you with the Eric Bell Band? Well, that was actually not long. That was a tour. Okay. Was, well, yeah. a tour with Eric. Yeah. yeah nothing I got, wrong with that. I got, uh, yeah, I, I did a little bit of recording here and there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I forgot to mention to you, somewhere along the line, I recorded a single with Chips. 
in the oh, studio. Oh, yes, yeah, Paul. Paul uh, and and uh, not a guy, I yeah. can't remember how that came about, but I did yeah. anyway. And apparently it got into the Dutch charts, I heard. Dutch? But Yeah, oh but I'd God. love to have a copy of that single. I can't Absolutely, even remember what yeah. the song was. Yeah. But anyway, coming back to uh, Eric Bell, yeah, th this was the sort of time where we'd be hanging around the Baggett Inn yeah. and Moran's was going at, the, at this sort of time. Mm -hmm. And again, I can't remember how it came out. I think... There was a guy called John Maxwell who used to sing in bands and run. Uh, he had some involved. Yes. Do you remember him? I remember John Maxwell. Yeah. It, he used to run uh, a gig above the Bagot Inn. That's right. Yeah. John Maxwell. Yeah. And he used to always get up with the bands and sing. You know, that's he was one of John, these type of guys, you know. Oh, Jim, yeah, absolutely. Do you remember him? He yeah, said, I do, a bit, of course. A bit rough at the edges, you know. He, he was Isn't one of these yeah. screamers on the vocals. But yeah. He was yeah, a good yeah. guy. He but, was a good guy. But yeah. somehow, I think or it is. was him. I got invited to meet Eric Bell with a view to, you know, uh, playing, uh, d d doing a tour. He had an Irish tour yeah. set up. Now, this, I think, was in, oh, this was in 1975. So it was yeah. post-Lizzie, yeah. basically. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, because Eric... Post-early Lizzie, yeah. Yeah, because uh, Eric told me the whole story yeah, about Lizzie yeah, yeah. at that time. And yeah. it was really interesting yeah. listening to it. And Eric Bell, he was such a gentleman. Oh, such he is. a nice oh, guy. Yeah. To work with, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and we had great fun. Yeah. Uh, How long did that last? Did that uh, last? I guaranteed. think we must have been about three months or four months. Oh, very good. Uh, in and around, it might have been two months. I can't remember. But yeah, we, yeah. we toured all around Ireland. Yeah, yeah. In, in that band, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. Absolutely, yeah. And, and it's great experience as well. Oh, it was great experience. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I remember when we came to the very end tour. I think our last gig was in the Bagot Inn. Yeah. of the tour and I didn't know what was happening after that but Jimmy Slevin came to the gig yeah and Jimmy the great knew. Jimmy Slevin who's now living in Germany yeah I Jimmy know. was at the gig and after the gig I remember myself and do you know who the drummer was with the Eric Bell band now it was uh, Danny O'Keefe ah yeah, yeah yeah Danny great yeah. drummer we had Danny out here as well yeah did, yeah I yeah. saw that yeah, yeah we did well Danny another nice guy yeah great absolutely, guy yeah. to play with and uh, anyway what, what happened was yeah, at the end of the gig, of course, we got talking to Jimmy, and yeah, and then Jimmy just sort of said, uh, "So what are you doing now?" So well, we don't know. He says, and then Jimmy says, "Well, look, if you want, I, I can step in for uh, for Eric if you want to do a few gigs." Yeah. So it was the same band, mm -hmm. just Eric goes off, and yeah. Jimmy stepped in, okay. and carried on and carried on doing gigs, and we became the Jimmy Slevin Jimmy band. Jimmy Slevin band, yeah, 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 until. Danny left to join some, I think it was a show band or something like that. He, yes. he wanted a proper... I think he went to Dickie Rockers. Yes. He wanted a proper income yeah, like, yeah. like most of us, yeah. you know. So he went off and then we got Brian Despart, my mate. Because okay. he was just one of the lads uh, okay. that I grew up with. And, and he was a drummer in my first band. He was mm. the, in the first garage band. Mm -hmm. And he came in and played drums. And then the Jimmy Slevin band was initially Jimmy, Brian and myself as a trio okay and then a little bit later we got jimmy gibson jimmy gibson in. lovely man lovely Lord guy rest him, yeah. great guitar mm. again, great songwriter absolutely and yeah. such a nice guy he always yeah. reminded me of roy wood yeah yeah that's right so he, he had looked, those little he did, yes. sort of blue glasses and he had the long hair the image yeah, of roy yeah. wood every time <laughs> i looked at him um, well, that must have been a great experience again. And, you, uh, you know, of course, you played Moran's quite a lot with the Jimmy Slevin Yeah, well, we had a residency at Moran's yeah. that seemed to go on for uh, so long, I can't remember how long it went on. Mm -hmm. But it was in every every second Friday night okay. we played in Moran's. On every other Friday night, it was the Boomtown Rats. Oh, that's so right. We, yeah. we alternated. And yeah. when we were playing... They would be at our gig, and oh. when they were playing, we would be, at, be their at their gig. gig course, so we yeah. were hanging around with the rats and yeah. all those guys at that time. And yeah. if you remember at that time, I mean, Morris was running a few nights a week. I can't mm. remember three or it four was, nights. It was probably at that time one of the most successful gigs in Dublin. Yeah, yeah. Um, as, especially on a Friday night, you know, like a weekend. Yeah. Um, even the Platter Men played there. Yeah, yeah. Before I joined them, yeah, they played in Morris. Yeah, I remember it very well. Yeah. And, uh, tell me about. The rides. Oh, the rides, yeah. Well, this was um, 1978. Uh, I had, I'm trying to think, yeah. I had left the Jimmy Slevin band at some point. Mm. Uh, look, look, I love playing with the Jimmy Slevin band mm. and uh, doing all these, but I got sort of what I call cold feet. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like I wasn't earning enough 
mm. for for the future. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I, want, I thought I've got to do something like getting a proper job sometime, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But I consider it to be a proper job. Yeah. I had my parents putting a bit of pressure on me as well, you exactly. know? Exactly. So I decided I'd go to college mm. again. And I uh, went back as a, as a mature student uh, mm. to study electronics. And I won't go into that now. But okay. the rides, but at the same time, I wanted to play music still because I love music. So yeah. I thought, well, I can do it on the side I yeah. can be a student and play mm. and I can't remember how I got involved with the rides but mm. I met Alan D and uh, <laughs> it's just a name to ride sorry go on yeah, yeah we we were called the rides and I remember when R -I -D -E -S. Alan D E S yeah Alan D was the was the main man Alan the great and we had yeah. Frank Boylan on drums of course previous creatures bass that's player that's right on great. drums yeah on drums I never this knew time Frank played drums uh, yeah and I never knew he played bass until he told me oh. you know? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and Jimmy Gaynor on guitar. Okay. And that was a, a great... We did some recording as well. I was in yeah. the studio with them. Can't remember what we recorded, but I remember being in the studio. But anyway, we, um, we, we were called The Rides. And I remember when Alan D told me the name of the band. Mm. We're going to call ourselves The Rides, he yeah, said. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he said it with a smirk in his yeah, face. You know? uh, and when we were going to gigs... He had this limousine, this old 1959 Chevrolet, I yeah. think it was. You know, the one with the big wings at the back of it. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. It was a big black Elvis one. type car. Yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> and when we would be doing gigs in Dublin only, we'd go, go in the van to outside Dublin. But when if it was local, we would go to the gig in the limousine. Yeah. And he would purposely drive around like Stevens Green you know, slowly, yeah. and with us, Jimmy and myself from the back and Frank, you know, waving mm, to the crowd yeah, as if yeah. we were rock stars. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Or and, presidents. <laughs> yeah. And we were probably just going to the bag it in around I the know, corner. for a pint, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Ditch Cassidy and Roots. Tell yeah. us about it. Okay, well, Ditch, I, I, I remember we had, there was somebody came up with the idea, no, it could have been Smiley Bulger, mm. because he was running Morans at the time, mm. but we were all there. I mean, if you remember at that time, every musician knew every other musician. Course, You'd just be hanging course, around and, absolutely. you know, just banter. You'd be having a pint. Hey, why yeah. don't we do this sometime? Yeah. Anyway, I can't remember how it came about, but we decided that there was going to be a house band mm. on a Sunday night and we would just invite guests to mm. come along mm -hmm. and play with the yeah, band. Okay, so, so yeah, we decided to have this, this band. And we called the band initially Roots, mm -hmm. because if you remember at that time, there was a program on television mm. called Roots. And it was yes. all about the, the slaves and the, the you know, the, you know, the, uh, coming the from of Africa America to the US. And all of that, uh, the slave trade and all that. Yeah. And we thought it would be a great idea because this was the, the big program on mm. the television at the time. You know, Absolutely. it was the Game of Thrones of its era, of you know, era, yeah. and we decided, well, let's call ourselves Roots and, and Guess what we'll do? We'll all paint our faces black, and oh, you know, no. uh, we dressed up as the black and white minstrels for our oh, first gig. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have photographs actually. I've given uh, oh, a few of those God. photographs. I don't you know can if see we can show those. But this is true, yeah. So oh, my God. You wouldn't do it now. But sure, we... look at the Zulu show band, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 Let's not yeah, forget that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but God. Anyway, what the band That's was good. about was playing every Sunday night, and we would invite whoever. Like, for instance, it would always be, like, a different guitarist. Yeah. Like, it might be Eamon Troy who would come along, or Dick Farrelly would come along and play oh, with us. Yeah. You know, so every week, and you'd get the likes of uh, uh, Johnny Logan or Sean O'Hagan and yeah, Nick yeah, O'Hagan. Yeah, 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 they yeah. come up and sing with us yeah. and ditch. And also Anto, Anto Drennan, I got him his first ever player, gig. Yeah, yeah. You know, and well. th that set him up for his career. For his career, that gig, correct, yeah. People saw him and he was yeah. great, you know. And yeah. So off he went. Uh, so this was a regular Sunday That's night thing. Good, good but experience. Yeah. We, we did do a few other gigs uh, as Roots, but we, uh, somehow we morphed into the name Ditch Cassidy and the All Stars. I don't know how that happened, but Fran Breen ended up playing on drums with okay. us uh, on a few of the gigs, and okay. one of the gigs was down in Cork, right? And Ditch got this idea that we were going to start the gig with dry ice on the stage, mm -hmm. and we 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 would put Ditch in a coffin, and we would have the roadies, whoever, carry Ditch up through the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, from the back of the hall, in the coffin, place the coffin on the stage, and then suddenly, at the appropriate moment in the music, the 
roof of the coffin would jump up yeah. and Ditch would hop out yeah. with Dracula teeth on him. And he had he, a cloak as yeah, well. And a cloak, yeah, remember, yeah. But his mouth was full of tomato ketchup. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and of course, yeah. the first word he's going, ah, like that. Yeah. And the tomato ketchup would come out of his mouth. Yeah, but unfortunately, yeah. there were a few girls at the front of the stage with white blouses on. Oh, and yeah. the tomato ketchup ended up on the poor girl's oh, blouse. So they weren't very happy. No, but, and Dick so. Farrelly was playing the guitar with us on that gig yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it was a wild gig, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah, was just, a wild, just man. wild. And the funny thing is, after the gig, we all had to stay in the local hotel or guest house, but but we didn't have enough rooms mm. for some reason anyway. And Ditch and some of them went off somewhere for some party afterwards. Anyway, whoever got to the rooms first got the beds. So Ditch ended up having to sleep in the back of the van. You know? <laughs> and then <laughs> the next morning, <laughs> we were having breakfast and we're all sitting around having the, the, the bacon, eggs and sausages. And... The roadie was eating Ditch's breakfast. Oh my god! Ditch pops in. Sees the did, did he? Yeah, he never got breakfast. You know, it was uh, just that these funny things come to mind. Uh, you know? yeah, this is absolutely. the sort of thing that would happen. You yeah, know? there there are so many many stories you could tell in bands. When I, you, I have when one you very funny with story with the Jimmy Please. Slevin band was we were going to a gig. We were playing the. You know that that big ballroom in Galway uh, on Salt Hill. What was it called? Oh yes, the the well, there was the hangar. The Sea Point. The Sea Point. Point. That yeah. was it. The Sea Point. Yeah. We were yeah. playing a gig uh, in the Sea Point. We had to be there at the gig by whatever nine o'clock or. Yeah. Anyway, we had this old banger of a bandwagon. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the, anyway. Cutting a long story short, the thing seized up on the way to to the, the gig. Gig. Yeah. And we're stuck somewhere like Mullingar, you know, mm. full of all the gear in the van and. You know, looking for a telephone box to, mm. to try and get a taxi, yeah. you know, or a yeah, van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how we found it, but we found a van and loaded all the gear and we got to the gig. But I had to leave the bandwagon. Oh, we behind, were. yeah. And then, of course, after the gig, the next day we had to pick up the, the vehicle. And then we ended up changing the engine in it. Brian, myself and Jimmy, you know, up to our elbows yeah, in yeah, Greece yeah, and yeah, doing yeah. all this. And and tell me, that van that you got, did you um, hire it or steal it? Uh, no, we... <laughs> Yeah, to hire it. I don't think we earned any money from that gig somehow. No, right? probably not. No, Phil Kilkenny and the Remolds. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. That's the way I remember them. Yes, it, that's it, right. That was the name of the band, wasn't it? Fit that was the name of the yeah. band, yeah. Yeah, well, now, Fit Kilkenny and the Remolds, really, after the rides, that, that was probably my next, next band. Okay. And uh, I was still at college at this stage. Mm -hmm. They were all at college as well. So they were like a semi-pro band, mm -hmm. just, just doing gigs whenever they could mm -hmm. uh, but the really nice bunch of lads um i got uh, they were like a rockabilly band mm -hmm. playing um you know uh, we used to uh, stuff like ian jury and the blockheads okay and, um, yeah, yeah yeah and uh to help me make it through the night and mm. also wrote a lot of our own songs but okay. but that was a great band to play because we got on really well as a mm. bunch of blokes mm -hmm. uh, there was martin uh, mcavoy on guitar mm -hmm. but we all had stage names and if you remember at, on television at the time there was a program uh, for the farmers called martin market Okay. Martin Market. Okay. So we called Martin. His stage name was Martin Market. And what was yours? Mine was Jack Plug. Jack Plug. So, sorry, no. Mike Stand was my name. Mike Stand. The drummer's oh, yeah. name was yeah. Jack Plug, and we had a second drummer. Sometimes played. He was called Mitch Michelin. <laughs> and <laughs> you getting all this? <laughs> and the guitarist, his name was Cesspool. Cesspool, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say he was too happy about that, would he? I don't want to be called Mr. Pink. Remember yeah, that in the movie? Yeah. But now we, listen, your, yeah. your, your career went on a really strange path then because yeah. all your, your studying in college and everything, this, tell me what happened then. You, yeah. you sort of left bands, didn't you? Yeah. You left the music business. Yeah, I, uh, I did. I, I, I qualified I, uh, in electronics. Okay, I actually taught, uh, I, I went to electronics college to studied to be a radio officer for a ship. I wanted to travel the world on mm -hmm. a ship. But anyway, when I qualified, there were no jobs. There okay. was a depression at that time. But the oil industry was looking for elect people with electronics qualifications. Mm -hmm. And by just by accident, I met somebody in a pub that was an old mate of mine that was working in the business. And he told me about it. And I said, wow, that sounds great. So very quickly, I got a job with my qualifications. And I went off to Libya 
Wow. Uh, in 1980 yeah. and uh, worked uh, on a two-year contract. And I thought, I'll do two years and then I'll come home. Okay. 40 years later, <laughs> I, wow. I've been in the business. Well, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's 41 years ago since. And I only did my last job two, year, two years ago. I did my last job in Tanzania. So but, were you actually based there for, for all, no, all that time or did you come home to I, Ireland I, and go I, back? I rotated at that okay. time. I go out for like five or six weeks, come home for two or three weeks, okay. go back. So I was on a rotation and I worked in like for two years in Libya. Mm. Then I worked in Tunisia for a few months, then back to Libya. Then I worked in Madagascar for a, nearly two years. Then I worked in Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, um, uh, where else? Uh, oh, Zambia, yeah, Zambia. Uh, you but know, you took up bass again, over oh there, yeah, didn't yeah. You, you yeah, played, yeah, that's you, right. You, well, I eventually ended up in Oman, and then I was a resident in Oman. I, mm -hmm. I ended up on a married status contract, so my wife and kids came out to Muscat, and we lived there for six years. Okay, and I hadn't played the guitar, the bass, for eighteen years at this stage. Mm. I still had my original bass at home in my house here in okay. Ireland. But I was in a pub uh, in Oman one time talking. Anyway, I, there was a band, an Irish band in Muscat that were playing traditional Irish music, you wow. know. Uh, and uh, they just wanted a bass player. Mm. And somebody heard I'd be talking about that I played in bands. They came to me and said, hey, Garrett, you played bass, didn't you? I said, well, I haven't played for years. Mm -hmm. But this, this band, an Irish band, they're looking for a bass player. And they, they, I said, well, I've no bass. And, uh, so they said, we'll give you a bass. Just come along and try. Mm. So I started playing with Talisman. Talisman. Uh, mm. All the hotels and the, the sort of corporate events, the mm. parties and all that sort of thing mm. in uh, Muscat, Oman. That, that was r really nice. Very well organized band. Mm. But that band then morphed into a band called the Hammerheads, mm -hmm. the Hammerhead Sharks. And we became a proper electric dance band Excellent, playing all yeah. the parties and yeah. we were like i think a six piece band or so i think it was six yeah and uh, we had a, a sax player in the yeah. band and yeah. all all good musicians yeah. and that that, that, uh, that was that, that went on for about well, two that years would, i mean i'm sure your work was was very you had to be very concentrated in your type of work so that must have been a great release oh, at night time to looking forward to playing Music, which you loved all your yeah. life. Yeah, it was brilliant because at that time I was based in Muscat. So I might go away for a few days to the work site, which would yeah. be in the desert. Yeah. But I was always, I was hanging around Muscat. So yeah. I was yeah. always available for, for gigs. And for me, I, I, I always wanted, that was always in the back of my neck. I mm. missed music so much. Yes. And I felt just my life, my career was mm. preventing me from doing something that, I never really got passionate out of my system loved, yeah, and I'm still passionate yeah. about it. And yeah, yeah. To be honest, I haven't got it out of my system yet. Yeah. So you had another band in the Middle East called oh, Still Raw. Oh yeah, yeah, now Still Raw. This was probably my favourite band that I played with in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, I was living in Dubai at this stage and I lived in Dubai for 12 years. And uh, at that stage, I, I ha had planned joining the band and I was looking around mm -hmm. and I just, at that stage we had uh, websites, you know, uh, for musicians and mm -hmm. I saw this ad looking for a bass player for Dubai, you know, mm -hmm. and I just contacted the guy and it turned out to be a really, really good uh, Lebanese guitarist, blues guitarist. His name is Fahad Majolani. Really oh, nice guy. I know guy. him pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another Lebanese drummer called Gilbert Souffon. And uh, they were just doing blues. I mean, real blues. Real you know? good. He's yeah. a proper blues guitarist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just improvises. You like, every time you play, it's different. You know, it's yeah. never going to be the same. I know. When you're, it, I know. So it was a wonderful band. And we did, uh, I played with them on and off for a few years. Yeah. And that was really the most enjoyable exp recent experience oh, musically. Yeah. And we did a lot of videos that are on YouTube of that band. Well, isn't that great that you actually fell into that, that uh, situation yeah. that you were able to play the music Yeah, yeah. when you're so far away and combine it with your very difficult job yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. It's wonderful. And yeah. the thing is, Fahad and myself, we clicked, mm. you know, mm. we, we, we could relate to each other. So mm. it was a very natural mm. sort of um, mm. group. To of play. course, it, of course. So yeah. whenever we played, 
it always turned out well. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, it just yeah. was one of those bands that just clicked. That's fantastic. I, so I, listen, you're you're with COVID and everything, none of us have worked now for coming on to two years. Uh, yeah. Pretty soon. So tell me, you came back to Ireland. What are you actually at now, Garrett? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'll just give you just before I say that. Mm-hmm. Just before COVID came back, mm-hmm. I, when I did come back mm-hmm. to Ireland, I joined. I'm still so eager to play music. Of I, I got the opportunity to join a great band called the Bogs of the Locks. Okay. Or the Bogs, right? Oh and yeah. They were uh, doing sort of the hotel circuit, you know, the mm-hmm. uh, cabaret type circuit okay. mainly, uh, playing traditional. They, they were like a traditional Irish rock band in the sort of um, horse lips vein. Okay. You, you okay. know, okay. electric and yeah. loud. And yeah. A, yeah. A, a great band, uh, very, very top class musicians. Okay. And they're still around but mm. not doing gigs of course yeah I, I left them because i went to tanzania i got i just got offered a job that yeah. i couldn't turn down because the money was yeah. too good so i of went off to, off to absolutely and that's how i left them but anyway you coming up to now i came back after the tanzania job and i started rehearsing with a band we were planning another band it was an elvis tribute band and mm-hmm. we were we were actually called Ray Elvis and the Headaches, but we. <laughs> I remember seeing that. I remember you had a video or something yes. on, the, on um, we played, Facebook or something. Yeah, we yeah, played or, a gig in uh, the the gig up there on the north side of the city in the city. Anyway, anyway, look, we did just one or two gigs and yeah. then COVID hit. So oh. what am I doing now? I'm doing now. I COVID has been a blessing. Mm-hmm. in lots of ways for me on mm-hmm. a musical side because I decided I'm not going to let this stop me playing. Mm-hmm. So I decided to use the time to learn all those songs that I always wanted to play in mm-hmm. bands mm-hmm. but never did play in bands okay. because they were not the sort of songs that the band would choose mm-hmm. or that we just didn't do it. So what I do now is, for the fun of it mm-hmm. and to keep in practice, is I learn all my favourite songs and then I record myself playing them mm-hmm. and video myself and I mix myself audio and video with the original artist. Oh, uh, I see. And yes. I show me playing the guitar. I've seen and, uh, I've seen a couple of your videos. Yeah. That's right. On, on, on Facebook. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that, that's my current uh, uh, thing, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, going into the future. Uh, there, I won't give any names or I won't say anything be, until it happens. Yeah. But there is, I have been given the word that there's something in the pipeline for me. Excellent. Once this COVID that I think might be interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, to, well, know. I mean, a lot of us should be working. You should be working because you're an excellent musician. Uh, and and it, it, we always end our conversations, yeah. if you like, with, with one question. I I don't think you're going to have a negative answer. Yeah. But do you have any regrets? Do I have any? Uh, I have no regrets about anything I did in music. Uh, I don't really have any regrets. That's what. That's why I thought you wouldn't yeah. have any negative answer to that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. No. It's been a good ride, a good life. Yeah, yeah. The, I guess... <laughs> If I can think of any regret, I'll force myself. The only regret is I wish I was younger. I wish I had a lot more years to Don't do we this. Don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thanks so much. Thanks very much, buddy. Enjoy that. Garrett Brown, <laughs>